64,000 is the median number of words per book. Average person reads about 200 words per minute. Simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes. To accomplish this in seven days, numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button, like, comment, and share. Enjoy. Hello, and happy day. How does slowing down sound to you today? Would you like to reduce the noise for just a bit? Are you ready to make a choice and decide to listen? My name is Igor S.F. Walker. I am here to remind people to slow down, to reduce the noise, to walk their lives into a natural flow. Welcome back. To the book of the week series every week as i read another amazing title i share it with the world today we look at what everybody is saying an ex fbi agent's guide to speed reading people by joe navarro and marvin carlins in this video we look at how to observe like an expert Detecting and deciphering the nonverbal behaviors of others so you can interact with them more successfully for business or for pleasure. This knowledge will enrich and magnify your life. Stick around till the end. I will share with you some tools I have and use that will help you tremendously in this game of life. Discover a way to find out what actually motivates you, what innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. I will share some tools to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. Recent advances in brain scan technology and neural imaging, scientists have been able to establish the validity of behaviors. Drawing from the latest discoveries in psychology, neurobiology, medicine, sociology, criminology, communication studies, and anthropology, plus Navarro's quarter century of experience using nonverbal behavior in his work as an FBI special agent, a vivid, dynamic environment where every human interaction resonates with information and as an opportunity to use the silent language of the body to enrich your knowledge of what people are thinking, feeling, and intending to do. Using this knowledge will help you stand out among others. It will also protect you and give you previously hidden insight into human behavior. What exactly is nonverbal communication? Nonverbal communication often referred to as nonverbal behavior or body language, is a means of transmitting information, just like the spoken word, except it is achieved through facial expressions, gestures, touching, physical movement, posture, body adornment, clothes, jewelry, hairstyle, tattoos, etc., and even the tone timbre and volume of an individual's voice rather than the spoken content. Nonverbal behaviors compromise approximately 60 to 65 percent of all interpersonal communication and during lovemaking it can constitute 100 percent of communication between the partners. Blocking is a nonverbal behavior that can occur when we feel threatened and or do not like what we see. Squinting and closing or shielding our eyes are actions that have evolved to protect the brain from seeing undesirable images and to communicate our disdain towards others. Nonverbal communication can also reveal a person's true thoughts feelings and intentions. For this reason, nonverbal behaviors are sometimes referred to as 
tells. They tell us about the person's true state of mind because people are not always aware. They are communicating non-verbally. Body language is often more honest than an individual's verbal pronouncements, which are consciously crafted to accomplish the speaker's objectives. Actions speak louder than words. One of the fascinating things about an appreciation for nonverbal behavior is its universal applicability. It works everywhere humans interact. Nonverbals are ubiquitous and reliable. Once you know what a specific nonverbal behavior means, you can use that information in any number of different circumstances and in all types of environments. Commandment number one. Be a competent observer of your environment. This is the most basic requirement for anyone wishing to decode and use nonverbal communication. Just as careful listening is critical to understanding our verbal pronouncements, so careful observation is vital to comprehending our body language. Concentrated effort, effort, effort effortful observation is absolutely essential to reading people and detecting their nonverbal tells successfully. Becoming aware of the world around you is not a passive act. It is a conscious, deliberate behavior, something that takes effort, energy, and concentration to achieve, and constant practice to maintain. Observation is like a muscle. It grows stronger with use and atrophies without use. Exercise your observation muscle, and you will become a more powerful decoder of the world around you. By the way, when I speak of concentrated observation, I'm asking you to utilize all your senses, not just your sense of sight. Commandment number two, observing in context is key to understanding nonverbal behavior. When trying to understand nonverbal be behavior in real life situations, the more you understand the context in which it does take place, the better you will be at understanding what it means. Commandment number three, learn to recognize and decode nonverbal behaviors that are universal. Some body behaviors are considered universal because they are exhibited similarly by most people. For instance, when people press their lips together in a manner that seems to make them disappear, it is clear and it's a common sign that they are troubled and something is wrong. This nonverbal behavior known as lip compression is one of the universal tells. Commandment number four, learn to recognize and decode idiosyncratic nonverbal behaviors. Universal constitute one group of body cues, those that are relatively the same for everyone. Now there is a second type of body cue called an idiosyncratic nonverbal behavior, which is a signal that it is relatively unique to a particular individual. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. Commandment number five. When you interact with others, try to establish their baseline behaviors. In order to get a handle on the baseline behaviors of the people with whom you regularly interact, you need to note how they look normally, how they typically sit, where do they place their hands, the usual position of their feet, their posture, common facial expression, the tilt of their heads, and even when they generally place or hold their possessions, such as a purse. You need to be able to differentiate between their normal faces and their stressed faces. By examining what's normal, we begin to recognize and identify what's abnormal. 
Commandment number six. Always try to watch people for multiple tells. Behaviors that occurs in clusters or secession. Your accuracy in reading people will be enriched when you observe multiple tells or clusters of behavior, body signals on which to rely. These signals work together like the parts of a jigsaw puzzle. The more pieces of the puzzle you possess, the better your chances of putting them all together and seeing the picture they portray. Commandment number seven. It is important to look for changes in a person's behavior that can signal changes in thoughts, emotions, interests, or intent. Sudden changes in behavior can help reveal how a pers person is processing information or adapting to emotional events. When we get bad news over the phone or see something that can hurt us, our bodies reflect that change immediately. Commandment number eight, learning to detect false or misleading nonverbal signals is also critical. The ability to differentiate between authentic and misleading cues takes practice and experience. It requires not only concentrated observation, but also some careful judgment. Commandment number nine, knowing how to distinguish between comfort and discomfort. It will help you to focus on the most important behavior for decoding nonverbal communication. These are two principal things that we should look for and focus on, comfort and discomfort. And commandment number 10. Ten Commandments. When observing others, be subtle about it. Using nonverbal behavior requires you to observe people carefully and decode their nonverbal behavior accurately. However, one thing you do not want to do when observing others is to make your intentions obvious. Many individuals tend to stare at people when they first try to spot nonverbal cues such Intrusive observations is not advisable. Your ideal goal is to observe others without them knowing. In other words, unobtrusively. In order to ensure our survival, the brain, the brain's very elegant response to distress or threats has taken three forms. Freeze, flight, and fight. Like other animal species whose limbic brain protect them in this matter, humans possessing these limbic reactions survived to propagate because these behaviors were already hardwired in our nervous system. Movement attracts attention by immediately holding still upon sensing a threat. The limbic brain caused us to react in the most effective manner possible to ensure our survival. Most animals, certainly most predators, react to and are attracted by movement. This ability to freeze in the face of danger makes sense. When suddenly caught in a potentially dangerous circumstance, we immediately freeze before taking action. Manifestation of the limbic freeze occurs during interviews when people hold their breath or their breathing becomes very shallow. Again, this is a very ancient response to a threat. It is not noticed by the interviewee, and yet it is quite observable to anyone watching it. Consistent with the need to freeze when confronted by a threat, people being questioned about a crime will often fix their feet in a position of security, interlock them behind chair legs, and hold that position for an inordinate amount of time. Another way the limbic brain uses the modification of the freeze response is to attempt to protect us by diminishing our exposure. Often thieves will try to hide their physical presence by restricting their motions or hunching over as if trying to be invisible, trying to master their environment by attempting to hide in the open. 
Another way people try to hide in the open is by limiting their head exposure. This is done by raising the shoulders and lowering the head. The third effect. Interestingly and sadly abused children often manifest these freezing limbic behaviors in the presence of an abusive present or a parent or an adult. Their arms will go dormant at their sides and they avoid eye contact as though that helps them not be seen. In a way, they are hiding in the open, which is a tool of survival for these helpless kids. When the freeze response is not adequate to eliminate the danger, or is not the best course of action. Example, the threat is too close. The second limbic response is to get away by the use of the flight response. Obviously, the goal is to choose to escape the threat or at a minimum to distance oneself from danger. Blocking behaviors. They manifest in the form of closing the eyes, rubbing the eyes, or placing the hands in front of the face. The person may also distance herself from someone by leaning away, placing objects or a purse on her lap, or turning their feet towards the nearest exit. When a person confronting danger cannot avoid detection by freezing, and cannot save himself by distancing or escaping flight, the only alternative left is to fight. In our evolution as a species, we evolved, along with the other mammals, developing the strategy of turning fear into rage in order to fight off the attackers. Neck touching and or stroking is one of the most significant and frequent pacifying behaviors we use in responding to stress. This is a relatively significant behavioral clue that can be used to detect, among other things, the discomfort experienced when a person is lying or concealing important information. Pacifying behaviors take many forms. When stressed, we might soothe our necks with a gentle massage, stroke our faces, or play with our hair. This is done automatically. Our brains send out the message, please pacify me now. And our hands respond immediately, providing an action that will help us and make us feel comfortable again. Sometimes we pacify by rubbing our cheeks or our lips from the inside with our tongues. Or we exhale slowly with puffed cheeks to calm ourselves. For observers of nonverbals, walking styles are very much important because changes in the way people normally walk can affect changes in their thoughts and emotions. A person who's normally happy and gregarious might suddenly change his or her walking style when told a loved one has been injured because they had been so directly critical to our survival throughout human evolution. Our feet and our legs are the most honest part of the body. Our lower limbs provide the most accurate, uncensored information to the alert observer. Used skillfully, this information can help you get a better read on others in all matter of settings. When you combine your knowledge of foot and leg nonverbals with signals from other parts of the body, you become even more capable of understanding what people are thinking, feeling, and intending to do. Humans, like many other creatures, including some lizards, birds, dogs, and our fellow primates, puff off their chest when trying to establish territorial dominance. Watch two people who are angry with each other. They will puff out their chests, just like a silverback gorilla. If you keep an eye on the hands, they eventually take you to the neck. When people touch their necks anywhere while speaking, there are 
in reflecting lower than normal confidence or are revealing stress. The covering of the neck area, throat, and or the suprasternal notch during times of stress is a universal and a strong indicator that the brain is actively processing something that is threatening, objectionable, unsettling, questionable, or emotional. It has nothing to do with deception, although deceptive people may demonstrate such a behavior if they are troubled. So again, keep your eyes on the hands and as feelings of discomfort and distress surface it in people, their hands will rise to the occasion and cover or touch their neck. Facial expressions can still provide meaningful insight into what a person is thinking and feeling. We simply have to be mindful of these signals and that they can be faked. So, evidence, unless evidence of true sentiment is derived from, derived from clusters of behaviors from facial and body cues and feet that portray or complement each other by accessing and assessing facial behaviors in context and comparing them to other nonverbal behaviors, we can use them to help reveal what the brain is processing, feeling, and or intending. We squint to block out light or objectionable things. We squint when we are angry or even when we hear voices, sound, or music we do not like. It is well known by researchers that humans have both a fake and a real smile. A fake smile is almost, it's used almost as a social obligation towards those who are not close to us. While the real smile is reserved for those people and events that we do care about. Note that when the lips are full, usually a person is content. Lip compression, reflecting stress or anxiety, may progress to the point where the lip disappears. We purse our lips or pucker them. When we are in disagreement with something or someone or we are thinking of a possible alternative. In business settings, lip pursing occurs all the time and it should be considered an effective means of gathering information about a situation. For example, as a paragraph is being read from a contract, those opposed to a particular item or a sentence will purse their lips at the very moment the words are uttered or as an individuals are being mentioned for promotion you will see lip pursing as the name of someone less desirable is being mentioned lip pursing is so accurate that it really should be given greater attention it shows up in numerous settings and circumstances and is a very reliable indicator that a person is thinking alternatively or is completely rejecting what is being said. A sneer, fleeting, signifies disrespect or disdain. It says, I care little for your thoughts. Nail biting is an indicator of stress, insecurity, or discomfort. When you see it in a bargaining session, even just for a moment, it is safe to assume that the nail biter is unsure of himself and or is bargaining from a position of weakness. People are interviewing for jobs or young men waiting for their dates to arrive should avoid biting their nails, not only because it looks unsightly, but also because nail biting shouts, I am insecure. We bite our nails, not because they need trimming primarily, but rather because it pacifies us. Sometimes we will involuntarily blush or blanch based on the emotional states. Blanching, turning pale, can take place when we are in the sustained limbic reaction known as shock. One type of human behavior that is difficult to read, and that is deception. In reality, it is extremely difficult to detect deception, far more so than getting an accurate read on the other behaviors. 
I recognize and appreciate the difficulties of accurately assessing deceptive behavior. More people, lay and professional, are not very good at detecting lies. Too many investigators misinterpret nonverbal behaviors over the years, making innocent people feel, feel culpable or unnecessarily uncomfortable. Both amateurs and professionals make claims that are outrageous, ruining lives in the process. And too many people go to jail for giving false confessions just because an officer mistook a stress response for a lie. Have a more realistic and honest picture of what can and cannot be achieved through the nonverbal approach to detecting deception. And armed with this knowledge, take a more reasoned, cautious approach to declaring when a person is or is not telling the truth. Deception, a topic worth of, worthy of study. Society functions based on an assumption that people will abide by their word. The truth prevails over mendacity. Set a realistic goal to be able to read nonverbal behaviors with clarity and with reliability. And let the human body speak to you as to what it is thinking, feeling, or intending. These are more reasonable objectives that, in the end, will not only help you understand others more effectively, lying isn't the only behavior worth detecting, but will also give you clues to deception as a byproduct of your observations. And there you have it, what everybody is saying. Please do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video so more people can enjoy it. Share it too and spread the word. Do leave a comment and share your thoughts. Subscribe to my channel and stay up to date. And the link to this book is in the description below. So you buy it and you read and you never stop learning, especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website. Find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. And if you feel you are ready to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management even further, do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. The links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.